If you've ever wondered where the inspiration for the modern performance cruiser came from, just take a look around. While the idea may not have stemmed directly from you, it's clear that bikes like the Harley-Davidson Low Rider S and Indian Sport Chief didn't appear by accident. They were born out of a strong demand from riders who crave tall, West Coast style performance cruisers. And what's more American than cramming a powerful V-twin into a cruiser frame with sporty suspension? Style paired with performance? Absolutely. Harley-Davidson was quick to capitalize on the custom, West Coast trend, largely because their loyal fan base had already established this style on the motor company's bikes, particularly the FX, factory experimental, with roots tracing back to the 1971 Superglide. As the 2010s progressed, Harley-Davidson's design team recognized that the twin shock dynasty time was coming to an end, leading to the launch of the Low Rider S in 2016. Although this bike embodied what customers had been doing with dual shock, rubber-mounted big twins for years, Harley-Davidson was in the process of consolidating its heavy cruiser lineup, and the Dyna series was discontinued in 2017. The revamped Softail lineup debuted in 2018, much to the dismay of die-hard fans who had become attached to the Dyna's distinctive style. Thankfully, the Lowrider S was revived as a Softail in 2020, powered by a Milwaukee 8 114 engine, and later upgraded to a Milwaukee 8 117 in 2022. The story of the Indian Sport Chief is more straightforward. After leaving its Chief platform largely unchanged since 2014, Indian completely revamped its cruiser lineup in 2022, introducing sleeker, more streamlined models like the Chief, Chief Bobber, and Super Chief. Notably absent were the traditional full-fendered, swoopy designs of previous Indian cruisers. The new Chief lineup significantly enhanced performance and introduced more customizable steel frames instead of aluminum. The only thing missing was a West Coast-style performance cruiser, a gap that Indian filled just a year later with the Sport Chief. With two authentic, American-made performance cruisers now on the market, the question arises, who makes the better West Coast-style performance motorcycle? You might think the answer lies somewhere along the California coast or in the mountains where this cruiser subculture was born. However, finding that answer is more challenging than anticipated. A closer look at the bikes. If you search online for a definition of West Coast club styling, you'll find surprisingly little. But that doesn't mean there isn't a common blueprint behind these tall bike West Coast builds. Most include a mix of aggressive ergonomics, a small front fairing, a tall back seat, and performance upgrades to the engine, chassis, and brakes. There may not be a strict formula, but there's definitely a pattern. This background helps explain the similarities between the bikes before you. Take the Low Rider S, for instance. It builds on Harley's Softail standard platform by adding the Milwaukee 8 117 engine, upgraded from the Milwaukee 8 107, a sportier inverted fork with triple-rate springs, replacing the conventional fork with dual-rate springs, more aggressive geometry, and a taller, performance-oriented shock. These changes increase cornering clearance by 2.8 degrees. In terms of West Coast styling, the Low Rider S features four inch bar risers paired with a moto-style handlebar, a speed screen fairing, a high-back solo seat, and minimal chrome. The all-black wrinkle paint on the hard parts is still a topic of debate among our staff, but we're fans of the bar mount display that replaced the tank-mounted cluster from previous models. The heavy breather intake and color accents on the Low Rider S are subtle, yet effective reminders that this style is as much about aesthetics as it is about performance. If you are not a fan of the Low Rider S for any reason, then turn your attention back to the Indian, which has a slightly more luxurious and less industrial appearance. Black is still very much the color of choice, but gloss paint and machine finishes on the bar risers and top triple clamp give the Sport Chief a higher quality look from the saddle. Same goes for the full featured, for inch touchscreen display that feels like the right display to have on a $20,000 bike. Supplementary hardware matches what you'd expect to find on a West Coast style build. Six inch bar risers are mated to a moto style handle. There's a quarter fairing with small but effective 6.5 inch windscreen, plus KYB inverted fork, upgraded Brembo calipers, and larger 320 millimeters brake discs. Compare that to the conventional fork and single 300 millimeters brake disc setup on the base model chief. The story is the same out back, where you'll find a more supportive and stylish solo seat and Fox piggyback shocks. 
Power upgrades come in the form of Indian's air-cooled Thunderstroke 116 engine, which offers more performance than the Chief's Thunderstroke 111 and is very much the main attraction when you walk up to this bike. Remember what we said about Americans loving big V-twin engines stuffed in sporty chassis? Well, this is a big engine, both in displacement and physical size. Even though it doesn't present as largely, Harley-Davidson's four-valve per cylinder oil slash air-cooled Milwaukee 8 still has an obvious performance advantage versus the two-valve per cylinder Indian. When strapped to our in-house dyno, the low rider S made 92.98 horsepower and 114.82 pound foot of torque, whereas the Sport Chief could only manage 73.70 horsepower and 105.17 pound FT of torque. This and a smoother power delivery also gave it the advantage in quarter mile testing. We have to give the sound award to the Sport Chief though, thanks to its deeper and more full exhaust note. We've talked often about HDS in-house sound chamber on these pages and recognize how important that cruiser sound is to the motor company. So to have the Sport Chief be the better sounding bike is a nod to the Lynx Indian has gone to not be the other cruiser option. Another nod goes to the Sport Chief's electronics package, which includes three ride modes, Sport, Standard, Tour, and a rear cylinder deactivation system that keeps the air-cooled twin from blessing you with unwanted reminders of how hot your ride is. Both bikes come with cruise control, a USB port, and keyless ignition, though the low rider S also gets traction control, a curious omission on the Sport Chief. When rubber hits the road, if when reading about the Sport Chief's touchscreen display and ride modes you were thinking, I don't need any of that on a cruiser, well, you might be right. Or at least in this case, you might be absolutely right, because while the TFT display and modern touches look good on paper, the Sport Chief's electronics cause more headaches than almost any other part of the bike. The dash takes suspiciously long to come to life. The ride-by-wire throttle is overly aggressive in sport mode, but rather dull in standard, and every once in a while our test bike would crank endlessly without firing. Cycle the ignition, give the fuel pump more time to prime, and we were back in business. These are not things riders will easily overlook on a $20,000 motorcycle. The low rider S is quite refined by comparison. We wouldn't describe the touch points like the grips and switch gear as visually beautiful, but the throttle connection is seamless. Thanks 